In today's episode, let's talk about sort of the bigger picture purpose of what artificial intelligence is supposed to be doing. Yes, it can take on tasks and uh, do repetitive stuff, in some cases better than, than the average person. Uh, it can write, it can draw, it can do regression analysis and tell you what's working in your data. All these things, the, these tactical use cases, are really important because they help people understand what the tools are capable of. But the bigger picture that I want to share with you is the idea from that artificial intelligence is really about making us faster and better human beings. AI shortens the distance from idea to implementation, from idea to reality. And it shortens that distance by providing capabilities that either we already have and it's more efficient or by providing capabilities we don't have and allowing us to create things that are, we're out of our reach, right? We're out of our capabilities. For example, I'm a okay writer and I do a lot of writing and sometimes I have the experience of just sitting there staring at the blank page going, huh, I don't know what to write today, right? Uh, I might have an idea, but I don't have anything concrete for my brain to latch on to. I'm like, be like, ah, I need to write something about attribution analysis, but I don't know what to write. So I might say, hey, GPT-4, write an outline for a blog post about attribution analysis within B2B marketing. And it'll spit something out. And that might be enough for me to go, oh, no, that's not, that's not what I would write. But it tricks my brain into going, okay, now we, can, we have something. There's a, a point to latch onto. Very often creativity is like crystallization, right? When you make crystals, or if you've, done, you've probably done this, if you're a parent, you've done this at some point with your kids, crystallization happens faster and easier when there's something for crystals to, to nucleate on, right? To, to start on. You put a string in the water, maybe dust it with a little bit of, of powdered sugar and crystals grow on it much faster than waiting for them to do it uh, by trying to find a random nucleation site within the, sol the sugar solution. When you have a machine generate something, even if it's mediocre, that's a, a, a hook for your mind to catch on and go, ah, here's this outline that the, the machine has written. And it's not great, but it gets you thinking. It gets you debating with yourself. It, it prompts you. Right? As much as we prompt engineer these prompts for artificial intelligence, it's prompting us in return to go, well, that's not how I would have done that. Let me show you how I would have done that. Right? Um, and in cases where you don't have skill, right? maybe you're not a great writer, you can cobble together a general idea and then have a machine spit out the rest. And then, yeah, you can give it feedback. You say, no, I didn't want it like that or no that's not what i was thinking about and particularly in the chat style interfaces the machines will keep trying and and provide you revisions when you look at art like i'm not a particularly good artist just not i i can draw a little bit i can paint a very little bit most of the time to be charitable it's borderline incompetent but i have the ideas of what i would like to do and the ideas are decent ideas. They would make me happy if I could bring them to life. Well, now with machinery, I can do that. I can bring it to life in a way that's maybe 80% of what I had in mind. If it's something for my own enjoyment, that 80% might be good enough, right? Or it might be a good starting point. I can hand it off to a real professional artist and say, hey, this is what I had in mind. And they could see it and go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get where you're going with this. That's, you know, that's what the machine spit out. It's kind of pedestrian, but it's, it's certainly a good starting point. Right? So AI shortens the distance from idea to reality. This past week, I was looking at what uh, was coming out with the Unreal Engine. This is a video game development engine. Um, and Unreal 5.2, which is, uh, I'm sure you know, if you watch this recording in a year's time, you'll be like, oh, that was ancient news. But as of today, it's the latest and greatest. And it creates these amazing, amazing cinematic environments for video game designers. And I look at those and go, wow, you could film a movie in here. Right? And it turns out they're actually um, 
There's a, a movie called Flight that is done almost entirely within the Unreal Engine, except for the human actors. Um, and then, you know, when you look at the, the sets that have been computer generated, you go, wow, this is so cool that you could create these virtual worlds that look real. It looks so real. And have actors performing their, their uh, lines and stuff within this environment. That could dramatically shorten the time and the cost it takes to bring, say, a scripted drama to life, right? The scenery is nice, but the scenery is something you can generate and allow the, the actors and put your money into, you know, hiring better actors or um, having better post-production or visual effects. Whatever the case is, you could do cinematic quality productions for less money. So if you don't have to spend $100 million on a movie, maybe you could spend $10 million, um, and still get the same quality, it shortens the distance from idea to reality. If you're an independent filmmaker and you can't afford to fly uh, you and your team to New York City and London and the Grand Canyon for these these you know shots that you have in mind, if you can render them in the Unreal Engine, which is a machine learning tool, among other things, and you can film the rest of the stuff on green screen, guess what? You can create a very compelling looking cinematic production on a shoestring budget by comparison as long as you have the technical skills to operate the software so that's the big picture for ai as of where it is right now it is about shortening the distance from idea to reality if you've got an idea there is now at least one if not more than one tools on the market that are probably low cost because you know everything that is right now is sort of the wild west and people are trying to just acquire customers by any means you can create that idea and bring it to life faster than you've ever been able to do that before. So think about that as the big picture role of artificial intelligence, not just to make meaningless drudgery go away, although that is certainly is a big part of it, but to also free you up and open you up to bring your ideas to life in ways that you could not previously. And if we do that well, and we do that thoughtfully, it dramatically increases our own creativity and it increases the satisfaction we get from seeing our ideas brought to life. Thanks for tuning in. Talk to you soon. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button.